Hey everybody, this is Russ Miller, and this is the first of a, a few lessons in playing brushes. And um, I have uh, my signature uh, HD brushes with Vic Firth that we'll be utilizing today. And uh, I want to talk to you first about uh, some, what I call, you know, the, uh, the Bible of brushes, <laughs> you know, some, some uh, commandments, so to speak. And uh, they would be, you know, for basic technique, and we'll talk about a basic stroke first, and then we'll get into a couple things. So, um, the, the, the first thing about brushes, I think, that freaks everybody out is the fact that we become responsible for the sustain of notes. Um, when we play the drums, you know, this is a quarter note, sixteenth note, half note, whole note. And uh, hopefully we're waiting around for the appropriate amount of time to play the next note. But when we play with brushes, we actually have to perform the sustain of the note. So an eighth note is, and depending the tempo, of course, and a quarter note, and a half note, whole note. So I become responsible for the length of the note, just like if I was playing uh, a wind instrument or any, any instrument uh, really besides percussion instruments are pretty much responsible for their sustain. Um, that's the first thing I think you got to remember and think about. So even playing quarter notes with the brushes becomes a little different. Uh, it's a da, 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 rather than just tap, 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 tap. Uh, knowing that first principle, let's talk about some of the basics of using the brushes. The first thing is you want to make lateral movements on the drums. You don't want to have the, the, the angle really high for the brushes like this, almost like a stick or something like that where you'd be doing this kind of stuff. You want to play down at the instrument and keep them as low and parallel to the drum as you can, okay? I see a lot of guys, you know, maybe playing too high and angled down too far onto the drum. We want to keep them low. Uh, the, the third thing is that you want to move them in opposite directions. So there are some movements where you would do this and come together, but most movements are away from one another. One's going right, the other one's going left, and you're, you're doing this, sort of a windshield effect a lot of time, windshield wiper effect a lot of times. Um, you get into trouble when you're coming towards one another like that, you know, you get the bristles caught, things like that, so you want to move in opposite directions. Uh, the other thing is you want to stay away from a lot of tip tap sounds uh, on the drum. First, it almost sounds like sticks, and secondly, um, you, you, you can't utilize the bristles to sustain or lengthen the notes when you're playing like that, and that's a big part of the sound of brushes, okay? So let's just take those, for example, those principles and work them into our basic beat. We'll keep the brushes low. There's two basic things that are going to happen with the brushes. The first is a sweep. And the second is a riding pattern or riding hand. And if you're familiar with my signature uh, HD brushes, that's exactly why there's two different brushes. There's actually a sweep brush. And the sweep brush has a thinner bristle and it fans wider to make a big sweep sound. Like this, like I'm making with my left hand most of the time. And then it has a second brush, which is a ride brush. It has a, a more dense or thicker bristle, and it doesn't fan as wide. So there's more of a distinct tap sound, and it brings the rhythms out of the, of the brush sound a little bit easier than having two thin bristled brushes. So that was the reason behind having actually two different um, models in a pair like that. And what's great about it is you can buy two pairs and have uh, three different uh, setups, two sweeps, two rides, and then the combination, which is great if you do want to play lighter or heavier. Um, so our sweeping motion between 10 and 4 o'clock in a football shape, 
um, starting at beat one at 10. So one, two at four o'clock, three at 10 o'clock, four at four o'clock, like that. Brush low, as much bristle onto the head as you can possibly get. Okay, so we'll just count it in a one, two, three, four. Okay, just like that, very simple. Okay, and then for our riding hand, uh, we're gonna start with just basically quarter notes. Okay, now remember, quarter notes are not tap, 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 like. But the full sustain of the quarter notes. And now that's performed um, in the opposite direction of the sweep. So I start over on this side of the drum, whereas two and four were here, two, four, two, four, two, four, just like this. You're seeing them go back and forth, like here's how it sounds. Now what you're gonna notice is that on the back beats, on beats two and four, I actually have a little flick of the wrist. So, I, I, again, I'm moving lateral on the drum like this. Not up and down, but lateral, side to side, and So there's a little backbeat to it. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. That's where the thicker bristles of the ride brush really come into play as well. Now I would just practice that at different tempos a lot, just playing quarter notes in the sweep, just trying to get it to feel pretty good and be strong and deliberate so that I could drive the band with just the brushes, really important. And again, when you're, even when you're playing a, a ride cymbal pattern, it's so important that you're pulling the quarter note out of the ride cymbal, right, to make the swing pattern feel good. A In its most basic form, it's just quarter notes with this little skip. So now let's go ahead and add the skip pattern into it. The um, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. You can see my focus is still a real solid quarter note drive and I'm doing the same pattern as I was but now I have a little flick in reverse to create that, that uh, little skip pattern. Very basic. Now, just as a principle for playing, I always recommend that uh, you do something that my good friend Ed Thickpin taught me years ago, which was play the melody of the song completely with the drums. Okay, so you pick a song, um, let's say uh, Beyond the Sea or something like that. Ba ba, ba da ba da, ba ba. I'm just going to play the melody. A one, two, one, two, three. Ba, ba. Okay, so I'm literally just playing the sustain of the notes of the melody, short, long, accenting, just right with singing the, the, the exact same part like a horn would play or, or the vocals. Now, I can take the song 
if I know the melody, I play it with the brushes, and I intersperse the timekeeping inside of it. And that would be, in its most basic form, a principle of how to get started. So let's do it with that song, Beyond the Sea. A one, two, a one, two, three. So you can see how I'm playing the melody, and then just when I'm not, I have a long melody note or a rest in the melody, I'm playing time and I'm supporting it. And just those two principles alone will really get you started down the road of playing brushes. And don't forget our sort of brush commandments that we spoke about in the beginning, so to speak. So let me give you a quick example uh, with a, a short little play along of some basic brush techniques with the band. Thank <laughs> you. 